Okay, welcome to part two of Mall Pretzels. So let's take a look at what we're uh, putting together now. I've got a tray with some parchment paper on it. I've got a little dish um, that I'm gonna put water and soda in there. I'll show you that in a minute. And I've got my kosher salt, which is going to be needed right at the end. And I'm melting some butter. Okay, so you could use margarine if you wanted to. Butter tastes just so much better, but if you've got margarine, use margarine. And uh, I've just got it on the melt setting on my stove top, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And let's take a look at the dough, and it has risen, and it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna get ready to roll these and bake them and enjoy them. See you in a sec. All right, so now we need to prepare the dip. Okay, we're gonna prepare the dip and get that ready. And um, this dip is basically, it's very similar to what they would do for bagels as well. And I'm kind of thinking, should I do bagels at some point too? But I think the recipe is very, very similar to this. Um, that process of letting it rise in a human environment would be called proofing. And most bakeries, and uh, actually easier for you to understand, if you go to a subway and you watch the unit at the back where they cook the bread, it actually acts as a proofer first. So it's a very humid, warm environment and allows things to rise really nice and doesn't really put a, 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 um, a shell on the outside. It keeps it nice and moist. And then, then when they bake it off, it's really, really, really good. But bagels and pretzels are usually dipped in this first and then they're baked. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm doing again a half, half recipe dip, but I'm going to put water in here. The temperature doesn't really, really matter. I like it just a little warm to start so that I can dissolve my uh, baking soda. So I'll grab a uh, tablespoon. Uh, if you're doing the full, uh, the full recipe, you're gonna put two tablespoons. Uh, if you're off a little bit, not a big, big deal. Um, but this is it, sodium bicarbonate, okay, otherwise known as the baking soda. And I'm just gonna put that in there and just kind of stir it around. So I want this liquid to be well mixed, and that's what we're gonna be dipping these in. So before you start any of this though, um, we need to preheat our ovens, and we're actually preheating to 450 degrees today. Okay, and those are gonna cook for about eight to 10 minutes. And uh, so I've already done that but you can do it. If you've got convect bake, it's fine. I like the bakes, the bake better, um, just because it's a little bit, you know, more slow in the thing. So let's, let's review. Um, okay, just heard something in my house there, so I just thought I'd go check that out. Okay, so once this is made, uh, you're going to uh, set this aside. We've got our oven to 450. Okay, so that's all preheated and that's ready to go. And now we're going to start uh, rolling out the uh, start rolling out the actual pretzels. Okay, so here's the dough. I'm just gonna pop that down. I don't, oops, I don't really need, I don't really need too much flour or anything like that on that. If it's really sticking, then you can add just a light dusting, but I wouldn't go too heavy on that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do initially, and you can see it's so light, it's so beautiful. Um, if you've done the full recipe, okay, I like to just sort of make a log, like that, and then I'm gonna divide that up. But if you've made the full recipe, you're gonna cut that into 12 pieces. I'm only doing six. So I find the easiest way is to sort of mark the half point, and then I'll mark thirds in there, and then I'll look at it. Do they look even? Does the thickness seem to matter to match? And if they do, then I'll just go and start cutting it, okay? Now normally, this is where I would use my bench scraper and not this little knife, okay? And again, don't be cutting onto your, <laughs> onto your countertops because I don't know about uh, your parents, but I know I wouldn't be too pleased with my children if they were doing that. So all I'm doing here is I'm just sort of rolling it like that and preparing them. I'm gonna take these balls here like this these little dough balls and I'm just gonna put them over here off to the side and I'll deal with these one at a time all right so the way to do that I'm basically trying to create a rope and that rope is gonna be about I don't know three two to three feet long all right and it's gonna be the, about this the thickness of your little finger 
So just gonna roll this out. And you'll see here, that's why I don't want any flour on here because I want this to sort of grip on the, on the uh, counter a little bit. Okay, now once that's done, okay, and I'm trying to go with the right, the same thickness here, all the way through. So the way to twist these is basically this. I take this here. I like to make a big happy smile face. Then I'm going to cross them. I like to cross them once again. And then what I'm going to do, so you can see there's a loop here, two crosses here, and you could do two, three, you could do more if you want. And I flip this over, okay, like this. You see how it looks like that? But I'm gonna press these two parts into it so that they become part of the whole thing. So this is what the pretzel looks like at the end, right? So I'm gonna put these aside and I'm gonna make all these. So I'll just show you another one. Now these are delicious. They're really, really good. All right, so here I go. I've got that. I'm going to cross it, spin it and cross it again. What the heck, I'll do a third one on this one. And then I'll flip it over and I'll press them in like that. And what I get is this sort of thing right here. All right, so see how these parts here are pressed right in? I press it through, almost all the way through. And then I'll lay that out, okay? I'll make the rest of these and then I'll show you the dipping process, the baking, and then we're going to butter them and put uh, sugar, or uh, sugar. I see, I'm thinking sweet too. And you could do that. You could do uh, uh, sugar in the raw. You could also do cinnamon sugar, or you can go on the savory side, which is what I'm going to do with the salt. And you could also uh, put some garlic in your butter when you coat it. The important part is that that melted butter is ready as soon as you come out. I don't have my pastry brush, but ideally in a perfect world, as soon as that comes out, brush it with the, with the uh, butter, drop the salt on it, and there you are. But we're gonna do it with a little spoon and my fingers. Okay, see you soon. So this is my dipping liquid, so just to remind you, the baking soda and the water, and all my are ready. Okay, all my pretzels are ready. Now you could let those rise even more. So you could let them sit. So our dough sat for about an hour. We could also let this rise even more. They will grow in the oven as well. Okay, these are big. So it may not look like much. And again, this is half the recipe that I'm posting for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to dip that really, really well, put it on there. The only thing that I would suggest is you dip them, they get dipped and they go right in the oven. Do not dip them and let them sit out for a little while. They will become part of the paper here. Even though it's parchment paper, it will stick and it will become part of the paper and you'll be pretty disappointed. So what I like to do is I like to even stretch these out a little bit more and I'm just going to dip that really, really well. I'm gonna to try to let all that excess liquid fall off and I'm gonna lay it out. I'll do the same for all of them. Okay, and again, I'm gonna try to stretch them out because this will grow and they'll all sort of uh, jump together. This is how I like to do them. Some people make them really sort of wide so they're not too uh, dense. And, uh, cause this will almost come out almost like a bun. There'll be some spaces in it, but not too, too big. All right, I'll do that again. Dip that really, really well. Let that excess come off. Okay, so that's done. They are dipped, they are ready. I'm going to put those in the oven right away and I will see you guys in about eight to 10 minutes. Oh, and make sure that you're putting them on the middle 
uh, shelf. Middle and bottom is always okay for your baking. Never put it on the top shelf. Okay, so just make sure you're trying to get to the center of the oven. You're trying to get to that middle part where you're not going to get everything burnt on one side or anything like that. So that part's very, very important. Okay, eight to ten minutes. See you. So the moment of truth has arrived. So it looked like more for 10 minutes on uh, on what I'm doing here. Um, so just keep an eye on it and when you, you get a nice brown on it. I don't like to go too, too deep brown. So it's not gonna look exactly like what you'd find in a hockey rink or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to pull these out and as soon as we do that, I'm gonna take my melted butter. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can't see it. <laughs> and my kosher salt. So I've got some uh, some coarse salt there. Uh, if you've got that, if you just have table salt and you have to use that, uh, you can. I mean, there's no, no big deal. Um, the coarse salt is just nicer because it spreads out and it doesn't give you that sort of strong iodine flavor that you might get from table salt. So let's get these out and see what they look like. There we go. So as soon as they come out, I want to hit them with butter. So if I had my brush, I would just brush them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just coat it this way in butter. And you can hear that beautiful sound. Oh my God, gorgeous. Okay, and I'm just going to continue to do that. And as soon as that butter is on and I get them on there, I want to sprinkle salt on there as well. There we go. So if you're doing a full recipe, you'll probably have about uh, two tablespoons of butter on there. More or less, it's not going to hurt. There we go. Listen to that sizzle. Sounds great. So then I'll take some of this in my hand. And I'll just start to sprinkle that on there. And the butter will help to make it stick, which is great. And that's it. And I guess I'll just sprinkle the rest like that. Gorgeous. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this over here, and again, don't put a hot, uh, don't put a hot pan. I've got a towel under this, okay? So don't put it directly onto uh, your countertop unless you have uh, granite or something beautiful like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this plate, and I'll just start to soak up any of that extra butter. Put them out like that. Gorgeous. A little hot. Just beautiful. There we go. All right, give it a little bit of height. So we'll just sort of let them lean up against each other like that. And that's it. That's mall pretzels. So if you've got queso, nacho cheese, or you've got some mustard. Mustard tends to be the the uh, the popular choice, and it's funny because it seems to be um, that regular mustard is really the one that brings it out uh, as as nice as Dijon can be. And I love Dijon for everything, but for this kind of thing, I like the regular prepared mustard, the yellow stuff. Anyways, have a great day. Thanks for joining me on this, and I uh, hope you get a chance to try this out. See you.